Hi, welcome to my reading room. Uh, I have read hundreds of books in here for hundreds of hours that you can find on my YouTube channel, Readers Are Leaders. But we're gonna take this opportunity for me to make videos of The Wheel on the School so that you can read with me a chapter at a time. Uh, I want you to have your book and you will literally be reading with me. Uh, you can read out loud while I read with you. You can mute me, you could read out loud with me. There are many ways that you can approach this, but we wanted you to be able to have uh, some interaction while you were reading the wheel on the school, and then you'll be able to participate in the class discussions as the teachers lead these chapters and these discussions. The Wheel on the School by Mindart, Mindart De Young. The pictures are by Maurice Sendak. And just a side note, Maurice Sendak is the uh, writer of the book, Where the Wild Things Are. He drew those pictures. He drew the pictures in this book. So grab your book. Join me in chapter one of The Wheel on the School. Chapter one, do you know about storks? To start with, there was Shora. Shora was a fishing village in Holland. It lay on the shore of the North Sea in Friesland, tight against the dike. Maybe that was why it was called Shora. It had some houses and a church and tower. In five of those houses lived the six school children of Shora, so that is important. There were a few more houses, but in those houses lived no children, just old people. They were, well, just old people, so they weren't too important. There were more children too, but young children, toddlers, not school children. So that is not so important either. The six children of Shora all went to the same little school. There was Yella. He was the biggest of the six. He was big and husky for his age. There was Elka. He was slow and clumsy, except in his mind. His mind was swift. There was Aka. And right here at the beginning, there is nothing much to say about Aka. He was just a nice, everyday boy. You could have fun with him. There were Pierre and Dirk. They were brothers. Pierre and Dirk looked about as much alike as, as second cousins, but Pierre liked what Dirk liked, and Dirk did what Pierre did. They liked to be together. They were twins. Then there was Lena. Then there was Lena. She was the only girl in little in the Little Shore School. One girl with five boys. Of course, there was also a teacher, a man teacher. Maybe to begin with, we really should have started with Lena. Not because she was the only schoolgirl in Shora, but because she wrote a story about storks. There were no storks in Shora. Lena had, excuse me. <coughs> Lena had written this story about storks of her own accord. The teacher hadn't asked her to write it. In fact, until Lena read it out loud to the five boys and the teacher, nobody at school had even thought about storks. But there one day, right in the middle of the arithmetic lesson, Lena raised her hand and asked, Teacher, may I read a little story about storks? I wrote it all myself and it's about storks. Lena called it a story, but it was really an essay, a composition. The teacher was so pleased that Lena had written a little piece of her own accord, he stopped the arithmetic lesson right there and let Lena read her story. She began with the title and read on. Do you know about storks? Do you know about storks? Storks on your roof bring all kinds of good luck. I know this about storks. They are big and white and have long yellow bills and tall yellow legs. They build great big messy nests, sometimes right on your roof. But when they build a nest on the roof of a house, they bring good luck to that house and to the whole village that that house stands in. Storks do not sing. 
They make a noise like you do when you clap your hands when you feel happy and good. I think storks clap their bills to make the happy sounds when they feel happy and good. They clap their bills almost all the time, except when they are in the marshes and ditches, ditches hunting for frogs and little fishes and things. Then they are quiet. But on your roof, they are noisy. But it is a happy noise, and I like happy noises. That is all I know about storks. By, but my aunt in the village of Ness knows a lot about storks because every year two big storks come to build their nest right on her roof. But I do not know much about storks because storks never come to Shora. They go to all the villages all around, but they never come to Shora. That is the most that I know about storks. But if they come to Shora, I would know more about storks. After Lena had finished reading her story, the room was quiet. The teacher stood there proud and pleased. Then he said, that was a fine story, Lena. A very fine composition, and you know quite a lot about storks. His eyes were pleased and bright. He turned to Big Yella. Yella, he said, what do you know about storks? About storks, teacher? Yellow said slowly, about storks? Nothing. He looked surly and stubborn because he felt stupid. He thought he ought to explain. You see, he told the teacher, I can't bring them down with my, my slingshot. I've tried and tried, but I just can't seem to do it. The teacher looked startled, but why would you want to shoot them down? No, I don't know, Yellow said. He wriggled a little in his seat. He looked unhappy. Because they move, I guess. Oh, the teacher said. Peer, he said to then, he said then. Dirk, what do you twins know about storks? About storks? Peer asked, nothing. Dirk, the teacher said, just the same as Peer. Dirk said, nothing. Peer, the teacher said, if I had asked Dirk first, what would have been your answer? The same as Dirk's, Peer answered promptly. Teacher, that's the trouble with being twins. If you don't know something, you don't know it double. The teacher and the room liked that. It made everybody laugh. Well, Aka, the teacher said, how about you? Aka was still chuckling and feeling good about what Pierre had said, but now he looked serious. All I know is that if storks make happy noises with their bills, like Lena said in her story, then I would like storks too. The teacher looked around and said, well, Elka, there in the corner, that leaves only you. Elka thought a while, I'm like Lena, teacher. I know little about storks, but if storks would come to Shora, then I think I would learn to know a lot about storks. Yes, that is true, the teacher said. But now, what do you think would happen if we all began to think a lot about storks? School's almost out for today, but if from now until tomorrow morning when you come back to school, you thought and thought about storks, do you think things would begin to happen? They all sat still and thought that over. Elka raised his hand. But I'm afraid I can't think much about storks when I don't know much about storks. I'd be through in a minute. Everybody laughed, but the teacher's eyes weren't pleased. True, true, he said. That's right, Elka. We can't think much about, we can't think much when we don't know much, but we can wonder. From now until tomorrow morning, when you come to school again, will you do that? Will you wonder why and wonder why? Will you wonder why storks don't come to Shora to build their nests on the roof the way they do in all the villages around? For sometimes when we wonder, we can make things begin to happen. If you'll do that, then school is closed out right now. All right, see you in chapter two.